Hello everyone, Linda Israel here, and today I thought I would go through some supplies to kind of give you some ideas and inspiration about what to use to make a junk journal. Junk journals are personal. I, I, that's what I want to put up front. It's all about what you enjoy and what you like and what you may find or have on hand or decide to purchase or trade for. So don't feel like that you have to do exactly what I'm doing or anybody else is doing. Use these as a starting point of, oh, she used that item. I have something similar. That's what I want you to think about. There's no wrong way to make a junk journal. There's probably wrong techniques for certain products, but it's not a wrong way to create a junk journal. I've got a pile of things in front of me. So right off the bat, my jerk journal that I'm going to make out of this pile of stuff is going to be a monochrome black and white pro prominent and it will have a little bit of touches of browns. It may have some silver and gold, but it's pretty much going to be neutral. And I thought I would do this because number one, it just kind of appealed to me. And two, you may be able to take things that you already have and do the same type of technique, but add your touches to it. Maybe you have a favorite color. You want to pop into that, do that. What I did was I used the All About Robin digital download. There's three different files. There's the subscription box files. There is the large journal kit. There's a planner kit. And these are all digital options that I have in my shop. I also offer a printed version of these kits as well. I decided to print these as monochrome. So when I opened up the file, I went into my printer settings and instead of it having full color or color, I chose monochrome. And this was the result that I had by printing monochrome. I went ahead and printed some cover stock where I can use these as covers. And sometimes my printer may not line up perfectly, so there may be a little bit of a gap here. And I'll use my Distress Inks to go around the edges. So I printed a few pages into covers is my plan. I've got here in front of me some notebook paper. Now, I may pull all of these supplies out and I'll have them here on my desk or nearby where I can use them. It doesn't mean I have to use them. It doesn't mean I will use every single piece, but I want to have this here because I feel like if it's visually near me, I will see it and pull it. So I've got a notebook papers. This happens to be a merchandise bag, a paper sack that has printing on it. Here's a scrap of cardstock that apparently I used back in, I bet you 2018, because that looks like an eight <laughs> that was left over from a project. Here's a page out of a composition notebook. So I've got a few huge piece that I can use there. I've got an adult coloring book that I thought, well, maybe the black and white would go with what I'm doing. This is a printed page from Canvas Court Brands, as well as this one. That was a project that I did a long time ago. Scrap of black paper. This is packaging that a product came in from Canvas Court Brands, and I cut it up because I thought that might be a neat element to use. This happens to be some polka dot paper, and I think it's a photocopy, to be honest, because of the way it looks. And it may be because I was doing a project and I needed a bunch of paper, so I copied it. That's a copyright violation. Y'all don't do that. <laughs> this is a drawing paper that's been coffee dyed, so it's got a nice deep color to it. I've got some onion skin paper. I've got book pages, just various kinds of book pages. Sometimes I use, uh, what is it, Bibles. I use dictionaries, reference books. I think this one is some kind of, it says the first part of King Henry the six, is that right? V1? Is that six? I think that's right because if V comes first. Uh, so it's just some kind of a story that was probably given to me. I've got some more here. It says uh, Edith Lyas' uh, Secret Guide to the Stars. So it's just, you know, random bits of pages. Here is some music out of like a songbook. Here's a Bible page. Here's some more printed pages. This time I printed, instead of on white paper, I printed on ivory 
paper. Same monochrome print settings, but you get a completely different look by doing that. So I printed a few of those. I've got just random bits of paper. I've got some tags over here. I've got, this is some canvas from Canvas Corp Brands. It's screen printed canvas. I've got some scraps of fabric, some lace bits, more fabric, some ribbon that has some printing on it. Here's some beautiful trims. I've also got my rubber stamps out. I've even printed a few of the elements from the All About Robins kit. This set I printed on ivory cardstock. I also printed some images from Calico Collage. These are some of her faux postage and I just thought they were really cute. And then I've also printed some of her words. This one I printed on ivory and it just gets a whole different look. I've got some paper flowers. I may or may not use those. I've got some Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist. So it just kind of depends upon what you want to do. I'm not showing you the cover material yet, but I will in a little bit later on. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to clean off my table and let's make a project. I kind of cleared back my desk a little bit and I thought what we would do today is part of showing you what you can use is to go ahead and make a journal page. Now I make my journal pages flat. I used to bind a bunch of pages together and then decorate them, but I found that I had more satisfaction out of making my pages flat because then I could individually choose what each page gets. So if I wanted to stencil, if I wanted to sew, rubber stamp, it was a lot easier when the page was flat. So right off the bat, I've got a page out of a Bible. And as you can see, this is where it was bound. I'm going to use a stencil on top of it. This is Diamond with Flair. And I'm going to get my box out that I use when I'm spraying my glimmer mist. So let me get some paper. All right, so I've just got it laid into a box just to help with overspray that I don't end up spraying all the way around on my desk. And I've got a black Tattered Angels. It's called It's Black. So make sure that you shake it up really well to get that mica that's in it mixed up into the liquid. And then we're going to spray. I'm going to make sure it's clean. Sometimes my sprayer sticks. I need to replace the nozzle. So I'm just going to spritz this into the box until I have the coverage that I want. I'm grabbing another sheet of paper and I'm going to lay that on top and mop up any tattered angels that's on top of the stencil. Now I like to go ahead and just spritz a couple of times on the back just so that it's not plain and I can use this as a journal page later. And I may end up, end up adding some stamping and stenciling to this, but at least there's something on there. You break up that white space. So here's what the mop-up page looks like. I like that it's, you know, random, it's not consistent, but if you want to be consistent, you can be very anal about it. I'm going to set this aside to dry. And here's what my book page looks like after spraying it. So once I've sprayed it, I kind of look at what do I want to do next? And it depends upon the supplies you have or what you like. I want to add some pockets. Maybe I'll do a little bit of collaging and I do want to create some writing space on here. So I've got a couple of book pages here. So I think what I want to do is kind of make a little composition here. So let's kind of play with this a little bit. I've got some junior legal tear off pages. So I was thinking maybe I'll use a piece of that in here. I may not use the whole thing. You know, sometimes it doesn't come together right away. So you kind of have to play around with it, decide what do you like? What do you want to put on here? So I think what I want to do is I want to do some rubber stamping onto those book pages because they're a little bit distracting to me. They're not coming together the way that I want. All right, so I have the French tiles stamp. I think this might get what I want. So I'm going to ink it up with black archival ink. And I'm going to stamp it all over. I'm ripping the edges off just to see what it looks like. And I'm kind of liking this look. So basically this page, when it's folded in half, we're only going to see part of it. So I'm okay with repeating a design on another page. I'll go ahead on this page, I'm going to use black soot distress ink and go around the edges of this torn uh, legal journal 
notebook paper. I'm just grabbing a few things off my desk to kind of see what I like when I put it together. So I want to cover up the holes that they're at the top of this page. And I think maybe what I want to do is I've got this piece of fabric that I think I could put across on this side of the page and maybe make this little label here, maybe a layered piece. And I think we need something on the written space as, or the writing space here, just to make it not quite so stark white. I've got this stamp from the textured edges and I think that's what I need. It's just a little bit of texture. So I'm gonna ink this up and it just adds a little distressed look to it. I'm gonna do the same with this piece as well. I'm gonna add some distressings. These were some ticket blanks that were from Canvas Court brands. Starting to come together, just little pieces here and there. I'm gonna test something. This is a part of the Banner Duo set. And if I don't like it, you know what? There's two sides to a piece of paper. So I'm gonna stamp this onto the label. And I kind of like that. Just a little bit of a pattern on there. And if we were to put the word imagine, let's add some distress inks to that. And let's grab another piece of fabric. So what if I put that on there? I'm kind of liking this, all right? We may make changes every so often. I think this could be made into a pocket. I've got a little piece of black cardstock here. So I'm gonna trim this to be a pocket piece on the bottom here. My journal pages are going to be 11 inches wide when folded in half, that's five and a half inches. So about five and a quarter inches would be a good size for a pocket. So I'm just gonna trim this piece to be that long. And I don't want it quite as deep, which is three inches right now. So I'm looking at my little composition that I'm making. It's an inch and a half. So if I go two and a half inches, that might give me a nice little look here. So if we were to collage this, we're getting a neat little look there. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I think I want to glue these pieces together and I just use Aline's Tacky Glue. So I'm gonna glue the word onto the fabric, just put a little glue in the middle here, and then I'll glue this on top. I'm looking at this piece to decide, do I want to make any changes? I think it needs a different piece of paper under there. So let's see what I've got. So I'm taking a book page. I'm just going to rip the edge. And then looking at this, if I rip it right about where the halfway mark is on the page, that would go there and this can go on top. So that brings a whole different texture level. So let's add some distressings around the edges of this piece. I'm liking that. I think what I want to do is stamp around the edges. I've got from the stitches set, it looks like embroidery stitches. So let's ink this up. And then if we put this on top, oh yeah, I like that. That just really comes together. Okay, so let's glue these together. And I think I want to make this a tuck spot. So I'm only going to glue down the sides and the bottom. And then let's go ahead and glue some pieces down here. So I'm going to glue down the book on top of the book page, this um, piece here. We'll glue down the fabric across the top here. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue right across the top and then down just a little bit further. And I'll just trim off any excess out here. I'll go ahead and glue this piece in the bottom corner so it kind of lines up here. I'll go ahead just so I know where the center mark is on my page and fold it in half. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and glue the pocket down into place. And I'm just putting glue on three sides so that it'll glue down into a pocket. I keep rearranging and that's okay. You know, you may not have the perfect, perfect uh, composition right off the bat. Rearrange it, redo it. You know, you can also walk away from it put things down walk away don't glue them into place walk away come back look at it you may say oh that's what it needed it needed something different so don't feel like that you have to rush into this i know that when i do my live videos that it comes together really quickly well that's partly because i've been doing it for a really long time and a lot of times i pre-plan what i'm going to show you <laughs> 
So this I did not pre-plan other than I just grabbed some supplies and you're really seeing how just kind of you work with it, play with it, see what you like as you're going. So don't feel like you have to rush. I think what I'm missing is I want a little bit of lace on here. So I'm going to look around and see what I can find for lace bits. I've got a little saying here that I think would look good on this ticket piece. Every artist writes his own autobiography, and that's Henry Ellis. So I think I'm getting my composition put together here. So I found a little piece of a ecru lace, and what I'm going to do is trim this to fit across my page here, and then we'll put a little bit of glue down, press this into place. To help it, I'll just lay a stamp on top to help press it down. I think I like this little composition here. So what I'll do is I'm going to glue this piece to the back. It's just a scrap that I had here laying after cutting off the uh, pocket piece. Then I'll lay this glue lace right behind here. So I'm just going to put a little bead of glue and then glue down this lace like that. All right. So now I'm going to put this piece down. So I'll glue it to the page, glue that over it. Yes, I'm liking it. This is a one of the Calico Collage faux postage. I had a different one here, but I think I like this larger size. Now I'm going to put it a little bit lower on the page. So when we see half of this page, it'll be right there. So there's still room here. If you want to put some other little ephemera there, you could. And I'm going to make this a tuck spot just in case. Who knows? You may find something that you want to put in there. So I'm just kind of gauging where my center is and gluing that down. All right, so let's glue these pieces together. I think I want another little piece of black. So this little strip will work. And then the lace can be glued right behind that. So it kind of gives us another little touch of black. And then this is going to be glued on top of this little element. So I'll go ahead and glue this down on my page, and then I'll glue the little cluster on top of it. My lace is glued down, so I'm going to take this little flower image and put that in the corner. There is one side of the page. I haven't put anything in the pocket yet, so let's look at my scraps here and see what I've got. Oh, I have a calico collage image that I printed. You know, that might look good, and I've got a white piece of cardstock. All right, so let's apply some distress inks around the edges of this piece. And I'm going to go ahead and apply some distress inks around the white piece of cardstock. All right, so I've got a start here, but I want to decorate this just a little bit. So I've got the Bella Rose stamp. So I'm going to stamp this on this white piece of paper. Kind of gives a little pattern to it. Got a little bit of fabric here, so I'm going to trim it. And what if we took a little piece and attached it to the top here? So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue. And then just slightly gather this by putting it in the glue and then just pushing it over. Okay, I'm liking that. I've got some of these little paper flowers here. So what if I took one of those and placed it right on top? So now we've got this piece that can go back here. And we've got this piece that can go in front of it. So we're getting lots of layers here. Now I didn't put anything in this tuck spot, but... Let me see what I've got. Maybe we've got a little thing. Ooh, I've got this little piece. It's just a piece of ivory or manila cardstock. Okay, let me see what kind of rubber stamp I can put on there. This is from the bird cube, one of the bird type cubes. We're gonna stamp it in this corner. Well, there's one journal page that we made just using the supplies that I had laying here that I pulled out. Just play with it until you get a design that you like. I can still continue to fuss with this. For example, maybe we'll go ahead and we'll add a little embellishment of a flower there. You can keep going as long as you want to or as much as you want to, or you can stop and keep it very minimalistic. All right, so we've got this side done. So let's flip this over and let's decorate the other side. So for this side, I've grabbed some black cardstock and this was that packaging from Seven Gypsies. And I thought that could be an interesting pocket element. 
I've got a piece of uh, music, song book, that I thought would look good on here. And then I also have some of this wide ribbon that I thought would look really good on here. So what I'm gonna do is start by adhering a couple of these things down, and then we're gonna make this into a finished journal page. So to start with, I know I want to put down this piece of book page first underneath the ribbon. So I'm going to grab my glue and just glue around this perimeter. And then using my ribbon as a guide so I don't to go up too far, this down. And then I could put glue in this area and get the ribbon put down. I'm going to put a couple of acrylic blocks on here to help hold that into place. All right, while that's drying, I'm going to work on my little pockets here. And I think what I want to do is I'm looking at this. As I want to make a little collage here. So right now that looks pretty plain to me. So I'm going to do some other additions. So what if we were to add maybe these little tickets from Calico Collage on here. Kind of looking to see if I like those. I'm gonna add some distress inks to the edges. Okay, I'm gonna glue down the side here. So I'll add a little bead of glue right here and a little bead right there. And I wanna position these so that it fills up that whole space. And then we can have two pockets in one. I like that. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing here. Okay, I like that. So I'm going to glue this piece down on top as a pocket. So we'll just use that ticket as the side here. Okay, I like that. So now I just want to make sure that I'm centered on my page and I'll glue this down as a full pocket. I got a couple pieces of craft card stock. So let's decorate these to be journal cards. So let me dig around for some stamps and other supplies and see what we can come up with. All right, so I've decided on what I want to stamp on these journal cards. So I'm gonna slide this up out of the way for a moment. I'm grabbing a scrap of paper. We're gonna ink up this botanical rose. I think that's what it is. It's a large botanical rose. And with a large stamp, you may need to stand up. So I'm gonna do that. So I stamped it off the page just a little bit. I kind of like that look where it just kind of comes around the edges there. These are gonna go in the pocket here. So as I look at these, I try to decide, all right, do I wanna put anything else on the top of there? And I think I saw, let me see here. I got a different piece of fabric. That's too, I think too much black on black. I have a little piece of this white and I think it doesn't need to be ruffled. So I'm just going to glue it straight across the top and you could stitch on there. If you have a sewing machine, I'm going to leave it like it is. I think I like that. I want something up here. So I'm going to take these out for a moment. And I found that I had some scraps of black paper and I have the word friendship. And then I have this little, uh, I think it's a Prima butterfly. It's one I picked up a long time ago, Tuesday morning. Yeah, it's Prima. It had a whole bunch of different ones. And I just picked out the gray, black, white. And I think I like that on there. So let's glue this together. Now I've got another piece. So I'm going to do the same thing, but kind of offset it to this side. Now I made a second tuck spot here. So prior to the video, I took some of the Calco Collage images that I printed as monochrome on white paper. I matted it behind or on top of a piece of black paper and then onto a white piece of cardstock. I did stitch around the edges and then I just cut a little snippet of lace and glued a flower on this one. Here I glued a piece of fabric. I have a piece of a crew lace, a little paper flower, and there's even a rhinestone on that one. And I thought that would look good in the pocket. I also have a couple of tags that I laid out here and I thought, well, might as well use those. So I'm going to put these side by side touching and I've got the beach, I think it's called beach rose. So I'm going to ink this up where it's kind of going over both of the tags at the same time. 
So you have a little bit of the flour on each one. And then I had a little scrap of this fabric. So I'm gonna poke it through the hole here and just tie a little knot, cut off the excess. That could go in here and do the same with this one. Well, here is our finished journal page. So on this side, we used a stencil, we rubber stamp, we layered different pieces of paper and fabric. On this side, we layered down some ribbon, which I need to trim a little bit. And fabric pieces, we used some packaging, book pages, weird ribbon that I had left over, some scrap of paper on here. That's what it looks like on this side. So you can see that you can spend as much time as you like creating a page or we can keep it rather, rather simple. So come back because I'm going to do several more pages and I'll also show you how to make a cover to put the journals inside as well. Alrighty, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate you taking the time to hang out with me. Please give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you have any comments, use that comment box down below. Check the description box for the products that I use in case there's something here that you like and you want to have one of your own. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe. I go live on Mondays at 3.45 p.m. Central Standard Time where I show how to make a journal and that's a perfect opportunity for you to come hang out with me live and and ask questions and if I can I will do things live to show you how to create a junk journal. Alrighty well I hope you enjoyed seeing a little bit about grabbing some supplies and making a page for a junk journal and that you'll come back and see the others so you can get more ideas. Thanks again for watching everybody. Bye.